In this video, we're going to take it the look at the distributive, oh, well, the factoring property. We'll call it the factoring property. What the hey? So here's what the distributive property says. The distributive property says for all real numbers, and you can pick any three you want, uh, if you take the first number there, you can distribute, and where's my red here? You circle that number, and you distribute that multiplication to both B and C, so that you have A times B plus A times C. Well, in this video, we're going to explore this equal sign and what it really means, uh, because you can kind of go both ways. And you can go backwards, and it's called factoring. This is, it's really distributive property again. So there's nothing new there. But what, we're got, what we have to do is we have to find the greatest common factor, and then we have to actually define a couple of things first before we can talk about that. Because we need two things or more things to find the greatest common factor of, and we need to know what those two things are. So let's take a look at this. There is a thing called a term. A term is a number or product of numbers that are usually separated by addition or in some cases subtraction. Uh, you can remember addition and subtraction can simply be rewritten as one or the other. You just have to change the signs of whatever you're talking about. Uh, if, you, if you're kind of unsure as what I mean by that, um, 3 minus 1 can be rewritten as 3 plus negative 1. And so you can rewrite subtraction to be addition. And so really, I mean, it kind of can be separated by addition and subtraction. So here's what a term is. Properly, a term is a number or a product of numbers. And now some people also put variables, and that's perfectly fine. But just keep in mind that a variable is a number that we just don't know the value of. And so that's why all of these uh, properties tend to work well with variables, because variables are really numbers that we just don't know. So a number or a product of numbers and variables. Very often when you have a collection of them, these are separated. Oops, separated by addition or subtraction. So, for instance, <clears throat> when we have, uh, oh, let's say uh, 3x plus 6, I have two terms. I have a 6 and I have a 3x. Those are both terms. Now, 3 and x, if you recall, the product, a product, is made up, is the answer, to a multiplication problem. These two numbers that make up the product are called factors. So when we factor something, we are pulling apart the factors in each term. So there's lots of little things going on here. But I want you to understand the nomenclature because I'm going to be using it. And so if you don't understand it, you're not really going to have an idea of where I'm going with this. So remember, I have... And let me go ahead and, and get rid of some of this here. Well, let me keep that actually because it's hard to get rid of. In 3x plus 6, I have two terms. Term 1 is 3x. Term 2 is 6. 3x has two factors. 3 and x are factors. 
what we are going to do is we are going to find the greatest common factor of all the terms that we want to factor stuff out of. That is our goal. And then we're going to use the distributive property to undistribute, to factor. I'm going to keep this up here just so you can have a reference. So I'm going to stick with 3x plus 6 because we're familiar with it. And I'm going to simply ask you to find what is the greatest common factor of 3 and 6. And so if you have a TI 83 or 84, you can get this done. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and got uh, my TI-83 out. And your TI-83 has the ability to find greatest common factors of two numbers. It'll only do it with two numbers unless you have an app or unless you nest them. But to find that, we can go to Math, scroll over to Num for Numbers, and down at Option 9, you will find GCD greatest common divisor. It is also known as the greatest common factor. So we can simply press GCD and we put in 3 comma 6, the comma is just above the 7, even for the 84. Close those parentheses and press enter. Well it says the greatest common factor of 3 and 6 is 3. Okay. So that's 3. Why? I have no idea. Let's, let's see if we can figure this out. Well, a greatest common factor. Well, factor means that it's a multiplier. You multiply factors together to get a number. And that's, that number is called a product. To be in common is something would have the same factors. To be the greatest is it would be the largest of those factors that are the same. And so if we were to write down different factors of six, of 6 and 3, we'd find out that, yes, in fact, the greatest common factor, and let's just do that. Let's just let's do that. The factors of 3 are 1 and 3. It's actually a prime number. The factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Well, if you notice, the number that's in common with both is 3. 1 is also 2, but 3 is the greater, or in this case, the greatest common factor. And so because they share a common factor of 3, and it is the largest factor they share, then their greatest common factor is 3. Well, what we're going to do with that 3 is we are going to pull that 3 out. So we are going to rewrite this. Remember, we have a times b plus c is equal to a, b plus AC. We are going to rewrite this, uh, this 3x plus 6 as 3 times x plus 3 times, in the case of 6, it's 2. Notice that we have an A value. That A value is 3. Notice that the structure of our result is going to put the 3 out front. So we'd have a 3 out front. And then whatever 3 was multiplying by goes back inside. The first term was x, that, it, that 3 multiplied by. The second term was 2. And there's a plus. And we close it off. So you can factor 3x plus 6 as 3 times the quantity x plus 2. That's factoring. That's all it is. Find that greatest common factor, factor it out, and then just rewrite it as two factors. One is the 3. The second factor is this quantity x plus 2. It's still a number. You just don't know what it is. Let's do one more. Let's try... 6y minus 14. 
So what we have to do is ask ourselves, what is the greatest common factor of 6 and 14? Well, if we factor each of these out, 1 and 6, 2 and 3, 1 and 14, 2 and 7, we look at it and say, well, they have 1 in common, but they also have 2 in common. And 2 is bigger than 1, so we're not going to look at 1. And that looks like it's it. That's the only ones they have in common. So they have a two in common. All right, a more practical way to do it. See this greatest common factor that they have in common? Put that out front. Open up a set of parentheses. Now, you are going to divide both terms by that number to include the sign of the number. 6 divided by 2 is 3. There's nothing to do with the y minus. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and you are done. The end. So see, factoring is really not that bad. The part that's typically the worst is trying to find this greatest common factor. That, that's usually tough. So just understand that if you have use of your calculator, you could have used your calculator to find this greatest common factor as well. You just simply say math, scroll over to num, you can press the up arrow and get immediately to number 9, or you can simply press the number 9, and it will load it right into your home screen. Then you put in the two numbers that you want, followed, or separated by a comma. Press Enter. It will give you the number that you have to put out front. In the next video, I'll do a more complicated version and show you how the distributed property can be used in everyday math.